As you can tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be replacing a starter on a walker mower um, and I'm doing so by pulling the motor out which sounds like a huge job but it's really not that bad. Uh, I've done it dozens of times uh, just on this machine alone. Not to replace the starter but to do other things, um, cleaning it and whatnot. What, how I want to start this uh, video though, I want to show you how to determine because a lot of people think it's the starter when you turn the key and it doesn't start. Okay, sometimes it could be a safety switch, it could be uh, you know a loose connection, it could be a lot of things. There's relays, all kinds of things that make it start. However, the way to prove for sure that it is the starter is, I'm sure a lot of you know this and maybe some of you don't. Okay, we got the starter down here. This big, let me see if we can get this to point. This big terminal right here is the power coming in. Okay, right here. And then it jumps across to this terminal, which is actually connected to the starter motor itself. This is the solenoid on top here. Okay, and then there's this little post right here with this wire connected to it. Yours may vary, but there's gonna be one wire that goes to this post or a post similar to this. Okay, when you turn the key, it goes through all the safeties and relay and fusible links, anything that it may need to supply power or to be able to shut power off. And it ends up putting 12 volts to this little terminal right here, which then takes this bigger terminal, which is higher power straight from the battery and jumps it down to this, which makes it start. Okay, so uh, the easiest way you can tell if your starter is bad is I'm going to let's see if I can stick you somewhere here where I don't have to hold you. Hopefully that'll work. I'm going to connect a test light up to ground. And then I'm going to put the test light right on. on that terminal and now I need a third hand all right hold on let me figure this out all right so hopefully test light is in view I'm going to go ahead and turn the key you can see the light light up every time I turn the key okay so what that tells us is the key switch the connections, everything before this is, this is the last in the chain, okay, right here. If you're getting power here and your starter's not turning over, it's your starter. Um, it could be a bad ground, okay, because it needs to complete the circuit. Um, so, you know, make sure your ground cables are good and, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the mower's just grounded right to the chassis. There's really no way for it not to be grounded unless it's loose and falling out. But your, your main ground is right here. You can see it connects right to the frame. So it's clean, it's tight, it's in good shape. So um, I also know that this starter is bad because uh, A, it's been, I think, five years now it's been in there and started obviously multiple, multiple times. And um, the last couple of weeks it's been turning over kind of slow and uh, sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. You know, you'd have to tap on it a little bit and it would get it to turn over. So I pretty much knew this was coming and of course uh, I've kind of procrastinated and waited till now to take care of it. So what we're going to do is rip things off and uh, pull this motor out and you'll see how, it, how it's actually pretty simple. Um, there are other people saying that you can and I'm sure you can. Um, let me put this all the way up. You can, you can uh, replace the starter without having to pull the motor out. Um, which is I'm sure possible. It's a, kind of a tight area here So apparently the, the, the problem is getting it out of there So what people are saying is if you remove the GHS blower 
that will allow you enough room to be able to get the starter off. Um, in my opinion, the, G the GHS blower is probably harder or as hard as, as pulling the motor. Uh, there are a few more steps to taking the motor out, but all the, the bolts are pretty simple to get to. Everything's pretty simple to get to. Um, yeah, after you've done it once, you'll be like, oh, this is no big deal. Um, and the, the GHS blower has some kind of bolts hidden out under the bottom, and they're usually really rusty, and they're really hard to get to, and then you got to lift the mower up. Um, this way, um, the mower can stay. Like, I'm going to do this right on the trailer where it sits because it's not starting, and um, I don't have to jack up the machine or anything like that. So let's uh, go ahead and, uh, and get to it. All right, throttle and choke cable. Those out of the way. Okay, here's the whole hair air cleaner assembly. belt belt now all that's left on this side is this wire right here just unscrew this and now everything on this side of the engine is disconnected all right, this shield right here, there's a bolt right here, a bolt right here, and then underneath, there's two 13 millimeter bolts. 
right there. One there and one down there. And the shield will come right off. Here's a better look, the bottom side, these two short 13s hold the bottom on. Now this is just an add-on bracket that somebody added because the tab broke off, which this one looks like it's ready to come off soon too. So yours will just look like that on this side, but still the same thing, two bolts up top, two bolts on the bottom. Now we're gonna remove the muffler, get it to two clamps, one there. In there then we got four 13 millimeters into the side of the motor Try to be careful of these gaskets. These have been off a couple of times. It's probably time to replace them. Okay, I'm 10 minutes in here, okay? All that's left to do is disconnects the wiring, okay? Which is right here. We've got this motor mount plate right here. So there's three bolts to do that. And then there's four bolts underneath here. Pull the fuel line off and just get this wire out of the way. And the motor comes right out. See it or not, but the fuel shut off right here.
Give these four bolts a three quarter inch. Like to double wrench for a little extra leverage. That's it. Motor's ready to be pulled out. Don't try this at home. But you should definitely, when you have it out, you want to clean out all these coolant fins, blow everything out, make sure everything's nice and clean. Just two 10 millimeter bolts right on the side of the motor. And there we go. Always have a spare starter. Let me grab it. That's not it. I know I have a spare somewhere. So guess what that is? The starter that I had in the shop that I've been holding on to, I think for four, four years or so, is not the correct starter. Not even really close, honestly. I'm not even sure how I have that starter. I was almost positive that it was a brand new starter that came off the last time I replaced the motor on the walker because it came with a starter and I just uh, either put the new one on or kept my old one or whatever. But it's different. Um, it's The size was different. The bolts, uh, the bolts might have been the right thickness apart, but the the way they bolt up is about an inch thicker the block plate it just wasn't uh, wasn't the right one so being a Friday and I'm halfway through my mow day in the walker it's now 3 p.m. the walker has the engine out as you saw at the beginning of this video I had to drive about an hour away to my local 
Walker dealer to buy a new starter, uh, which also I paid premium price for because A, it's Cape Cod, and B, it's a Walker dealer. I would typically order something online. Um, it, I don't feel too bad because I did have a plan. I thought I had a, uh, a, um, a starter on hand, so, you know, my mistake, but um, it's really nothing I'd do different in the future besides know better that I didn't really have a starter on hand because I typically would have one on hand or anything like that. Um, I have, you know, an extra one of pretty much anything that might go on a Friday like it does during the demo day like it did. And for whatever reason, it's not the right one, and so I had to pay $250 for that one. So, uh, anyways, I'm not sure what the moral of the story is besides an update that I am now going back to the shop and will continue putting the starter in that I just picked up, and you'll see that in the rest of this video. But uh, I might do a real-time assembly of the... Um, engine when I put it back in just to show you I mean it's literally working kind of quickly it you know it's it's 15 minutes uh, it, you could actually do it in under 15 minutes if you tried to rush um, you know the first time you do it it'd probably take you 45 minutes whatever um, gather up your tools or whatever but um, it, it does go back in pretty quick and, and you'll see that and uh, it's really not that big of a deal to pull the engine on a walker so all right, I'll uh, continue on with this video.
And that's it. Hook up the battery. And we're done. Be an extra bonus if it actually starts. One size fits all. All right. Is that a mess of tools? Let's see if I get a good starter. Wish me luck. Good to go. Turn the gas back on. Almost forgot. And that's how you diagnose and change a starter and a walker mower. Or if you just want to remove the engine, as you can see, it was pretty quick. Got to hit this with a little zip tie here. This is the wiring for the uh, for the um, high lift catcher. I didn't have a zip tie on me, but it's fine right there for now. But she's all back together. You could see how quick that was. Uh, it doesn't take long at all to put it together and uh, take it apart. All right, guys, have a good one. I got to get back to mowing.